Shalom. Koholo Yahawa Ba'ashum, Yahusha Ba'ashum, Raka Kodash. The bonds of the apostles, the bonds of the elders, the great most don't rule well until it's truth. Much respect to you, brothers out there, just preaching this word in truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Tabernacle Devo for Lekin Speckle Bird and Wednesday Shalom. Hey, we're getting closer and closer to the end of this thing. And uh, us as watchmen, you know, we're going to keep watch, see how things play out. You know, um, when the plague hit, if I'm not mistaken, you know, some of the Esau, Edom's elites, you know, came out and said that uh, all that was a test run. And, you know, I wholeheartedly believe, you know, especially with this year being coined, the whole for year of Jacob's trouble. You know, you're about to see the real thing play out. All right. So stay on your watch. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, staying in the spirit, doing your lessons. You know, and uh, hey, we'll see how this thing plays out. You know, as you see right here, the porch strike could delay delivery of critical medications. It could be devastating, doctor says. Hey. And you, hey, <laughs> I don't know if some of these people out here in the world think about that, but you got a whole bunch of uh, transformers out here, and they rely on that medication, man, You're right? That medication to either suppress hormones or to give you hormones. Either way, they rely on the medicine, man. And you about to see a whole bunch of <laughs> bunch of raptors out here, man. You know, a whole bunch of people go crazy. Right? You know, as it says, expect shortages of bananas, booze. You know, hey, people love their booze. And right? Hey, hey, the scriptures speak of you, you're not gonna drink it for joy. You're gonna drink it in sorrow, man, because that's that's gonna be like the only drink you have. <laughs> You know, chocolate, I love chocolate. You know, I love bananas, cherries, all right? I wouldn't be surprised, you know, car parts. I wouldn't be surprised other other things as well, all right? We'll see, we'll see how this thing plays out, you know, how long it lasts. You know, once again, this year is queen, the whole for year, Jacob's trouble. So, hey, we'll, we'll see what happens, man. And then um, you had uh, Hillary Clinton. And if I'm not mistaken, Trump as well. I don't have it in here. I believe he said um, to stop crime, we're going to need one day, <laughs> one day of chaos, something to that effect, you know, sounding like the purge. Right. They don't make those movies for nothing. Right. That's going to happen in real life. All right. You see right here, Hillary, Hillary Clinton predicts October surprise that could up up in election. Something will happen. And we've been seeing this over and over. All right. Over and over. That they're saying something's going to happen before the election. Right. So don't be surprised if something happens before the election, man. Right, selection, I should say. All right, because it's really an illusion of election, it's really who the wicked elites want and see who they um, can get the people to uh, follow behind, galvanize behind. All right, it says October surprise is a news event that may influence the outcome of the upcoming November. Selection, particularly one for the presidency, whether deliberately planned or spontaneously occurring, right? And we know under this man Esau Edom, it's not spontaneous, right? It's deliberately planned because the date for national elections, as well as many state and local elections, is in early November. Events that may take place in October have great potential to influence the, to the decision of prospective voters and allow less time to make uh, remedial actions. Thus, relatively 
last minute news stories could either change the course of the election or reinforce the inedible. The term October surprise was coined by William Casey when he served as a campaign manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get to the scriptures, man. Once again, we're going to stay on watch. We're going to see what happens, man. Isaiah, Eslachia, 2nd Ezra's 5 of verse 1. Nevertheless, as the coming tokens, behold, the days shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in great number. That, that time is coming, right? Incoming famine, the beginning of sorrows. All right, Trump has said uh, uh, to stop crime. You need a huge uh, chaos, one day of a chaos situation, something to that effect, right? People are going to be taken in great number. And the way of the truth shall be hidden, all right? We're not going to be out there giving you what's the word, man. We're not going to be giving you it, all right? And the land shall be barren of faith. Right, people are gonna be going crazy. People are gonna be looking for us, right? And the only ones that's gonna have faith is the elect. So <sighs> like you, all right. But iniquity shall be increased above that which thou now seest, and that thou hast heard long ago. And the land that thou seest now have root, shall shalt thou see wasted suddenly. So it's gonna be crazy out here, man. Right. It's going to be crazy. The love of many shall wax worse and worse. Right. And eventually. The ultimate icing on the cake. The nuclear missiles. Right. Isaiah 65 verse 13. Therefore thus save you how will power. Behold my servant shall eat. But ye shall be hungry. Behold my servant shall drink. But ye shall be thirsty. Behold my servants shall rejoice. But ye shall be shamed. ashamed. That's coming man. You know, many brothers had dreams of that. You know, I myself had dreams of that. You know, the Lord taking care, care of me, you know, in the household, whoever was rolling with me. It was people out there, you know, trying to get some food from us. And hey, hey, I laughed at them, <laughs> pushed them away. Like, nah, you ain't getting none of this. <laughs> you know, um, for those that, you know, around my age, you know, you, you that, that one SpongeBob episode. When they was out there in the wilderness, you know, <laughs> with the magic console, you know, SpongeBob and uh, Patrick were eating good. But Squidward was over there uh, starving. That's, <laughs> that's how a lot of people going to end up like, man. <coughs> Slock you. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart. Wasn't SpongeBob and Patrick doing that? <laughs> You know, imagine that, man. We're going to be in the same spirit, man. Why? Because we were in the house of mourning. We were fasting. We were praying. Right? We were doing the work of the Lord while everybody else was out there feasting, living it up. Right? So the roles are going to be reversed. But ye shall cry for vex, cry for sorrow of heart. And shall howl for vexation of spirit. You see? They're going to be out here crying, man. Their stomachs is going to be touching their backs. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord, Yahweh power, shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. Hey, the Lord going to slay you, man. Slay you niggas out there. Right? Disregarding the word. You know, not taking heed. You know, you got so so called dudes that are so called and it's true. And they out here wor waxing worse and worse. They gonna be part of it too. Now I wanna get this example. You know, Joseph, you know, one of our forefathers was taken care of. You know, matter of fact, when you go into the story of Joseph, what he what he had to go through, you know, equated to us now, you know, the the scriptures speak of you know, your friends and family members, you know, going against you. Didn't that happen to Joseph? Right? He was the most beloved. He was the favorite son of Israel. All right. Jacob, Yaquab, all right. Yasharala. He was the most beloved sons. And his other brothers saw that. All right. They sold him away. 
You know, he he was a hey, brought to prison. You know, all the hell that he went through, man. There's nothing new under the sun. You know, we got to prepare for these things, you know, spiritually preparing our mind for these things. I know easier said than done, but Joseph got through it. You know, once again, all the things that, that he had to go through, you know, being in prison. But eventually the Lord set him up on high. Didn't the Lord do that? Set him up on high? We're we going to read about that. All right. And, and there was a famine in the land. And guess what? People were coming to him. Nothing new under the sun, man. Nothing new under the sun. You know, people going to be coming up to us for answers. People going to be, you know, don't be surprised. They'll be coming up to us for food. You know, for protection. And however the Lord deals with it, you know, with within our spirit, some people may be helped in that day. They may end up being of the elect, those that we help. And hey, the Lord, hey, best believe we're gonna put that hard spirit on us. We're gonna be out here laughing at you people, man. But let's go ahead and get this account. Genesis 41 and verse 28. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh with power is about to do. He showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great uh, plenty throughout the land of Egypt. You know, nothing new in the sun. Ain't, ain't this place full of abundance? Right? Go to uh, the supermarket. Go to the fast food. You got your food right there. Right? There shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt and the famine shall consume the land. Nothing new on the sun. Hey, don't be surprised if that happens again. Right. This country is supposed to be such a, you know, quote unquote, great country, great kingdom. Matter of fact, you already see the deterioration. Right. And it's about to get worse. When that famine hits or they close these ports, all right? And the plenty shall be known in the land by reason of the famine following. There shall be very grievous. So people, you know, it's, it's going to be famine, man. At plenty, that harvest, it ain't going to be remembered. Or the people going to dwell on it. But you're going to have to get used to the new way of life, all right? 41 and verse 32. And for the dream was double unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the things is established by power and power will shortly bring it to pass. So hey, hey, the Lord show you this, show you this twice. It's going to come to pass. There's nothing that you can do about it. Even if you seek the prophet, prophet is just going to uh, confirm. There's nothing that you can do about it. It's going to happen. <laughs> All right, just buckle up. All right, just like Jacob's trouble, all hell's gonna break loose. Nothing that you gonna, nothing that you can do about it, except for make your call on election sure, and buckle up for this ride, man. All right, jump down to uh, Genesis forty-one and verse thirty-nine. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as power showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shall be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. You know? Hey, hey. Check it, check it out, man. Once again, when you look at the at the woes that Joseph went through, man. Right? At the woes that Joseph went through. And now he's been seated up on high. You know, goes to show you that the Lord will take care of you, man. Trust in the Lord. Go through what you have to go through. Yeah, it sucks. Right? But understand, that's the Lord trying your faith and building you up as a man. Right? And then you're going to be set up on high. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over the land of Egypt. Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vesture. With fine linen, you know, these are expensive things, right? And put a gold chain about his neck. You see, hey, that's how you know that's Jake, man. What does Jake do when he get his money? He get himself a gold chain. He get himself rings. He get himself 
fine clothing, man. All right? That's Jake, man. You don't see those uh, issues doing that. They ain't got that flavor, man. <laughs> All right? Matter of fact, they be selling fake drooling. <laughs> he made him to ride in the second chariot, which which he had, and cried before him, bowed the knee, and made him to rule over the land of Egypt. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, and Pharaoh, without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph Zavanafan. <laughs> Slocky, I can't even say that. I'm going to have to look that up, actually. What's that? Genesis 41 and 45. Let's see if I got a blue letter. It's like you. It's 41. Go to uh, 45. Let me see what that name is. Strong's H, 6847. Safinath Paneach. Safinath Paneach. Second Treasury entry. of the glorious rest. Paneach. Paneach. Uh, name given by Pharaoh to Joseph. Right. Hey, we, hey, we going to be made a treasury, man. Right. Y'all right to Zah, we, we be a treasury in the most high's eyes, you know. Hey, 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 we that gold, right? You have given him a wife, daughter, let's see, priest of one. Joseph went out over all the land, so he got a, hey, he got a wife too, you know. Ain't the scripture speak of Isaiah 41, 4 and 1, you know, seven women. Shall uh, uh, join hold unto thee. Here, roughly paraphrase. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in seven plenty and in seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. So it was very plenteous at that time. But we understand Everything is through balance. And this is what we're going to read. Genesis 41 and verse 55. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for, for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, go unto Joseph. Uh, what he said, if you do, you know, so the people hey, hey, equate that to the times that we're coming into now. People going to be looking for us in the famine. People going to be looking for us for answers, man. And the famine was all, famine was all, all the, um, the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold the Egyptians and famine waxed sore in the land. So, you know, Joseph was, was rich, man. Joseph was wealthy, man. The Lord made it to where he had it like that. You know, you got to admit, you know. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people to get fed. And, and it's in the uh, midst of a famine, you know. And all the countries came to Egypt to Joseph to buy corn because that famine was so sore in the land. You know, equate that to the times that we coming into, man. We going to have it like that, man. You got to believe that. We going to have it like that, man. All right. We gonna have it like that. Y'all rock this out, man. And you gotta believe that. Right? If he did it for our forefathers, he's gonna do it for us, man. He's gonna do it for you. And you gotta believe that, man. Alright? So y'all rock this out as an edifying lesson.